Well, questions. Question number one, Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to ensure that NHS staff feel able to raise concerns about the service. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. All staff should have the confidence to speak up and know that their whistleblowing concerns will be treated seriously and investigated properly. NHS Scotland already has robust whistleblowing procedures in place and we have continued in recent years to put in place additional supporting measures such as the National Confidential Alert Line and Non-Executive Board Whistleblowing Champions. Work is underway to establish an independent National Whistleblowing Officer for NHS Scotland, which will complement our existing policies and provide an independent and external level of review on the handling of whistleblowing cases. This will further contribute to better patient safety and also encourage an open and honest reporting culture. Alex Cole Hamilton. <clears throat> I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Year on year, the NHS staff survey has found that up to a quarter of staff don't think it's safe to speak up or challenge the way things are done if they have concerns about quality, ne negligence or wrongdoing. If they don't feel that they will be taken seriously or that their issues matter, then that will have a severe impact on their morale. Now, we have seen in other public services, most notably in Police Scotland, how damaging this can be. If staff knew that the confidential alert line, which the Cabinet Secretary describes, was a permanent fixture, not just funded on a rolling 12 months basis, does the Cabinet Secretary not believe that they would be more willing to use it? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, can I agree with uh, Alex Cole Hamilton that the staff survey is an important way of us hearing from staff on the front line, their views, their concerns, and it is very important that we act uh, upon them. The, I think the current alert line provides a, a, a good service, which of course um, isn't, doesn't just stand alone. It complements a, a range of whistleblowing mechanisms which have been developed in partnership. I outlined some of that um, in my uh, earlier answer and of course we want to take further action which is why of course we are working uh, on the plans for the um, for the uh, INO um, which uh, we are looking at the legislation at the moment developing that um, that will provide I think further uh, reassurance to staff the independent national whistleblowing officer will have an important role in ensuring that in addition to the whistleblowing procedures already in place that that, that adds more uh, robustness to the process in terms of the funding i mean I, i'm committed to ensuring that the the um, alert line uh, continues um, we will want to ensure that it continues to meet the needs of staff that may mean that it will develop um, uh, over time uh, but i think it does not uh, provide an important function and hopefully I can give the assurance to the member that I am certainly committed for, uh, for its continuation. Alex Colham. I am grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for that assurance. The Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, Paul Gray, said that staff wanting to raise issues have not done so. They fear the consequences or believe it will be pointless because concerns won't be acted on. We cannot afford for there to be even the perception of such a corrosive culture within our NHS. Staff need to feel reassured that they are part of a listening, transparent health service. One campaigner has called for a root and branch review of how the NHS re reacts to justifiable criticism. Is this something the Scottish Government has considered, given how much it appears to have already learnt from the Freedom to Speak Up review that occurred in England? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I thought Paul Gray was, was quite right to give what was, I think, quite a frank um, interview. And uh, he, what he said was that uh, you know, we have a number of mechanisms in place, obviously, with the alert line and very clear policies at a local level, worked in partnership with the unions that are about providing a range of ways that staff can give their view. Um, sometimes, obviously, that would uh, involve potentially issues with a line manager and therefore there are procedures in place that staff can report concerns out with the line management structure. But you know, if we thought enough had been done, then we wouldn't be working to establish an independent uh, national whistleblowing officer uh, for Scotland. That, as I said earlier, is going to complement the existing policies and provide 
uh, an independent and external level of, of review on the handling of whistleblowing cases. That will add, I think, another important dimension. But you know, if there is more we can do to help to contribute towards a, a more honest and open reporting culture, then we will look at what more can be done. I think it is very important that staff feel able to give their views uh, and, and to raise any concerns, not least. It can be very important from a patient safety perspective. Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to ensure that there is an independent and external review system in place for the handling of whistleblowing cases in Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, as I said earlier, work is underway to establish an independent national whistleblowing officer, which will provide a, a complementary uh, service to existing policies and provide that important independent and external review on the handling of whistleblowing cases. We've considered the, the range of views expressed in the, the consultation and we want to continue to work with our partners to make sure that staff are protected when raising concerns. And as I said earlier, we want to encourage an open and honest reporting culture. Donald Cameron. It's clear from Paul Gray's statement that NHS staff still feel unable to speak up about concerns. Um, what is the Scottish Government's position in relation to confidentiality clauses in staff contracts, which may also be preventing employees speaking up in public? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have done a lot of work around confidentiality clauses. We have made it very, very clear uh, to boards that they should only be used in very exceptional circumstances. And if you look at the change of the use of confidentiality clauses over the years, are far, far, far fewer uh, um, now uh, used. Uh, a lot of work was done when issues were raised previously and concerns were raised about the use of confidentiality clauses. That is something I will continue to keep an eye on, and I'm very happy to keep uh, Donald Cameron uh, informed. And if he wants an update I'll, uh, with some detail on that, I'm certainly happy to write to him. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I think, first of all, we should thank Paul Gray for his intervention uh, yesterday. I thought it was very brave and honest intervention from him, and I hope he gets the understanding of the Health Secretary rather than the wrath of the Health Secretary uh, as a result. The reality is that increased vacancies in our health service and cuts in our health service is only adding extra pressure to our already overstretched NHS staff. One in 20 at any one time being on sick leave. Surely that would not be acceptable. That was the ratio in our parliament, so it shouldn't be acceptable in our health service. The NHS staff have a duty of care on patients. I believe us as parliamentarians have a duty of care on NHS staff. So what additional steps will the health secretary take post uh, Paul Gray's intervention yesterday? Well, I think any fair person listening to the answers I gave earlier, if Anna Sarwar had been listening, I would I actually agreed that Paul Gray was quite right to put on the record uh, his concerns. Rather than chastising or giving him my wrath, I actually support what he yeah. has said. And Nana Sarwar perhaps should listen more carefully yeah, yeah. to the answers yeah. given. Uh, in, in, in what Paul Gray has said, um, in his position of leadership and in my position of leadership, I think has made it very clear that we take very, very seriously any staff members' views or concerns and how they then are able to articulate it, which is why, over the course of the last few months and years, in fact, a whole range of opportunities have been put in place that enable staff to raise concerns, uh, whether that is through the alert line, they can do that anonymously, um, the, or whether it is through the structures that are there within our boards. That, all of that has been done in partnership with the unions, uh, and we will continue to work in partnership with them. If we thought, though, enough had been done, then we wouldn't be moving towards establishing an independent national whistleblowing officer. Um, that has been um, taken forward after consultation about the best way to do that. If there are any further mechanisms we can do to uh, improve, uh, uh, to, to develop uh, and improve an open and transparent culture, then we will do so. Uh, in relation to what Anna Sarwa said about uh, vacancies, well, of course, we have record levels of staff in our NHS. We have 11,000 additional staff uh, in our NHS. 
Um, because we have more posts, sometimes that means we have higher levels of vacancies because some of those posts are more challenging to fill. But what I would say in paying tribute to every single person that works within our NHS and care services is that um, as far as I am concerned as Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing, I will do what I can to ensure that we develop an open and transparent culture as Paul Gray will do in his leadership position. Yeah. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what powers you anticipate the Independent National Whistleblowing Officer having and when will it be introduced? Cameron Secretary. Well, we'll use the findings of the analysis to further inform and refine proposals to ensure that the Independent National Whistleblowing Officer is equipped to carry out the role effectively. We're clear that the INO should have the ability to provide independent challenge and oversight and should have the powers and functions that enable it to do so. So we will introduce legislation to bring the role and functions into effect. This will complement policies already in place, as I said earlier, to promote, support and encourage whistleblowing and further develop that important open and honest reporting culture in NHS Scotland. And of course, as that um, legislation goes through Parliament, all members from all sides of the House will have the ability to input into the passage of that legislation. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And that concludes topical questions. We now move on to the next item.